Good morning. Aloha. Happy Father's Day. Uh, sometimes I don't like to date these things, but uh, it is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day. Um, share with you out of Isaiah chapter 59. Uh, they didn't leave me a lot of time. I'm kind of teary-eyed because uh, um, different folks spoke some real blessing into my heart, and I thank you for that very much. Um, needed it. Not easy being a dad. It's not easy just work, 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 work. But uh, times are refreshing will come, and I, I know that. I know that things will work it out, you know, and we'll have the time that we need. Um, so I have a couple of points to make here, I guess, through this. Uh, as I was studying in Isaiah, I noticed a couple of things just stood out in the language uh, in the King James. Um, the first two verses set up for the rest of it. And as a, as a man, as a human, you ask why. You know, it's just one of those things. There's two questions where you ask why. You know, verse 3 and verse 12 both have this word for there. And it's the answer to the question why. Okay? So the premise or the key verse, again, is verse 1. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. God hears everything. He knows everything. Okay? He knows the, even the thoughts and intentions of your heart. Kind of scary. But yet he loves us. It's, hmm. And uh, it's hard to wrap our, our human ears around that. And then there's this caveat, this, this beware. This, uh, in verse 2, it says, but. It's your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Huh. All the way up to this point, as you go through uh, chapter 58 and before, it talks about how, how people were so satisfied in their own relig religiosity that they were doing the right things. They were making the right motions, wearing the right clothes. They were buying the right products. They were eating the right foods. But none of this had any bearing on their relationship with the one true and living God. That's a personal thing. It's something that you don't do to gain favor. Okay? It is something that God extends his hand to us and we must receive. And if we don't accept what he's giving to us and we decide to do it on our own, decide to go off and just whatever we want to and say, ah, God, he's just winking. He's just the man upstairs. He's, that's ah, okay. You know, someday we'll, we'll make up careful it says your iniquities have separated between you and your god this is why so so he says well why because a human thing so verse three brings out four it says your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity your lips have spoken lies and your tongue hath muttered perverseness none calleth for justice nor any pleadeth for truth they trust in vanity or nothing this, this, this uh, shimmering clouds, a, a, a vapor, and speak lies, and they conceive mischief, and bring forth iniquity. All their plans are evil. See, they hatch cockatrices' eggs, and weave the spider's web, and that he that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they be able to cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. There are some that that is all that they think about. Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Their whole mind is... is, is, is possessed or with evil and evil intentions and thoughts and, and they're looking for who they can be who can be their next prey and if they're and if if you know the sucker born every moment wc feel a uh, handy used to say yeah well, yeah the one that came up with um um the little spinny thing at, like at the uh, honolulu zoo has one i don't know if you've ever seen it but uh, at the uh, circuses they used to say see the egress Go see the egress, that big arrows and signs pointing to the egress. 
Well, when you went out that thing, you couldn't come back in. You had to buy a ticket to come back in. Sucker born every moment. Ooh. Well, these guys had all those kind of same plans. What, what kind of way can I sucker you? What kind of way can I hurt you? Um, and yet they wanted to, to believe that they were okay with God. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doeth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold, ob obscurity. For we wait for brightness. But we walk in darkness and we grope for the wall like the blind and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and we mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. We look for salvation, but it is far off from us. Why? He answers the question again, verse 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth away far off for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter yea truth faileth and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey when you finally try to do good you get slammed down right uh, in Hawaii we have a thing called uh, the ama crab syndrome it's a, if you ever go out and collect crabs to eat they're delicious but uh, uh, you put them in a bucket and you don't have to worry about them crawling out of the bucket because the one that's trying almost out of the bucket, another one will reach up and grab him, pull him back in. And uh, sad, but that's the same thing we find a lot in society here as well. When one is starting to make it, they find a way to get them, you know. Uh, the, and he that departeth from evil makes himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness is sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation. Sound a lot like the New Testament, doesn't it? Like Ephesians, you know, somewhere right there. Yeah. He says, upon his head and he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to his deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he shall repay, recompense. Careful, Hawaii. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun from the east. When the enemy shall come in like a flood and the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And when the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth forever. Now, there's 66 books in the Bible. There's 66 chapters in Isaiah. Uh, chapters 1 through 39, Old Testament oriented in Isaiah. And then uh, the that 27 chapters that follow it are follow along pretty closely along with, uh, you know, the New Testament. And here God is declaring his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior. He is the one who's going to come. God was distressed that humans were left to their own folly, that they, he had provided them a path, a schoolmaster. He gave them the law through Moses. It didn't work out. Before that, he gave them righteousness through uh, a sign, through uh, circumcision with Abraham, and showing that they, they, they were uh, uh, going to follow the path of God. But 
That didn't work. They needed more. So they needed the law. The law came about. The law wasn't enough. The law just taught them that they were sinners. And they agreed and continued. They needed a savior. They needed someone who could remove their sins and could cast them as far away as the east is to the west. And Jesus was just that one. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. And Jesus is the first and the last. He's, he, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit spoke the world into being. And, uh, but he suffered himself to become like man. He was born of a virgin and suffered uh, us for a while. How long? He said, how long will I put up with you guys? You know? uh, but he knew. He knew it wouldn't be long. And then he would be crucified for our sins. He would pay the penalty for our sins and purchase us a place in heaven where we could be forever. He would give us the free gift of eternal life that we could accept so that we could have a man, someone in our place, someone who could arbitrate for us, someone who could be our advocate, our, our lawyer, someone who could speak for us to God when, we, when our words would fail us. Because Jesus knows our every weakness. He's felt them. He's, he's been attacked. He never gave in, but he definitely knew exactly what it's like to live as a human on this earth. So therefore, he has true compassion for us. A love that goes beyond just love. It's a love that we should know because he gave his life for us. He loved us enough to give his life for us. And in exchange, what does he ask? He just asks us to trust him and his plan, to, for, to ask him for the forgiveness of our sin, to ask him to come into our heart and become the Lord over our life and our Savior. And he does that. And he doesn't do it on our timetable. He doesn't do it on our plan, that's for sure. I resisted for many, many years, but then God, I'll tell you what, God, God caught up with me. And uh, this squirrely boy... Uh, Puhi boy ended up uh, becoming the Lord's, and he changed everything about me, uh, much to the consternation of my mom. <laughs> um, my dad would have been proud if we could have talked, I think. But um, Spend time with your dad if you got him. Thank him for being around. Love him. It's when they're gone that there's, you know, there's not much you can do after that. But now you got an opportunity. Um, our Heavenly Father loved us enough to send Jesus Christ. That's true love. And I'm sure there's someone in your life that loves you and has sent something, has done something, has been preparing, has been trying to care for you. Uh, it's those folks that you need to thank. And let them know why they're living. Um, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. And we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you are a kind, a loving, and Heavenly Father who loves us enough to give us the free gift of eternal life. And uh, Lord, I'm glad that you offered that to me. I accepted that you've made a change in my life and you've changed who I am. And I'm grateful to be where I'm at and who I'm with. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.